Hey, what's happening, Wargamers? Welcome to another Tuesday video. And as you guys know, on Tuesday, I take a look at some stuff that, uh, you know, just stuff that I'm interested in that's very cool that uh, generally I like. And this week, I'm very happy to say we are taking a look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Change is Constant uh, box set uh, board game. So this is published by IDW Games. It is designed by Daniel Lansdowne, Pete Walsh, uh, with uh, uh, involvement by Kevin Wilson. Uh, very excited about this one. This is the basically the, the second iteration of a Ninja Turtles board game that we've seen. Uh, they did attempt a first one with uh, Shadows of the Past, which you know in its own right was a fairly solid game. I I enjoyed it thoroughly. I really liked a lot of the models that came out of it. Um, but they have moved on and they uh, they have refined it. Um, now I do want to say that this one is kind of cool because this was actually sent to me. Uh, <clears throat> so kind of a nice nice little gift in that regard. Uh, and right off the bat, the box has some really good heft to it. Uh, like really good heft. So there's a lot of content in this thing. So really excited to dig into it. And uh, yeah, right on the back, we can see like there's a bunch of components here. The plastics themselves look really good. I do like the fact that unlike the first one, this has a full co-op game mode for it. The first one's co-op was very limited. Um, so I'm happy to see a lot more co-op there. The models themselves, just at least from the renders, look like they are a lot more, um, a lot more detailed than the first ones. Uh, there was a lot of sizing and scale issues with the first one, so you know hopefully they were able to kind of uh, address that in this particular edition. So we are looking at a one to five player game. It's a all versus one type thing or that co-op. Going to take roughly sixty to ninety minutes if you know what you're doing. So let's crack into it right off the bat. And look at that! Right off the start, we are greeted with the adventure comics and the rule book here. So the very similar uh, way that they did the first one, where basically everyone is kind of, or every uh, scenario or campaign is set up, kind of like a uh, kind of like a, a comic book. So it's telling a little bit of a story as you go through it. I really like it. it gives you a very clear rundown of everything in here. Uh, nice clear imagery of uh, what is supposed to be deployed where. I, I like it quite a bit. Uh, I think this is a really nice way of focusing on it. Got some art from the uh, from the actual comics as well, from the IDW run of the uh, the comics, which if you haven't read them, go check them out. They're a lot of fun right there. Uh, so yeah, I really like that. I think that's I think that's a fantastic way of of basically showing off the um, uh, showing off what the game has to offer as far as scenarios go. Uh, as far as the rulebook goes, everything looks pretty straightforward. It's a beefier rulebook than the first time around. Yeah, coming in at close to 40 pages there. I do like that there are some FAQs in there. I like that they have some uh, additional rules just to sort of like touch on maybe like uh, edge cases or something like that. Got plenty of good diagrams, so I really like that. Uh, and then, yeah, we still have the, the neat little dice sharing mechanic that they brought forward in uh, Shadows of the Past. So I'm, I'm liking a lot of what I'm seeing right here so far, which is really nice. Uh, I do like, you know, the little... The little uh, batches of artwork that they're including in here as well very nice amount of uh of just showing off what each each thing is here what each token each uh each icon is and so it looks like we you know okay so that's a pretty decent amount of uh components in there like actually quite a bit of components i i do like the amount of models we're seeing in here i like the amount of enemies oh okay that is a lot of plastic right off the bat you know we're going to take a look at these last and we're gonna go. We're gonna dive into these components first. And oh my goodness, just so much going on here. So let's get to this. So right off the bat, I can feel that the components actually feel a lot better than they did in Shadows of the Past. There's just a feel to them that I can't quite put my finger on it. Just everything about it, though the the quality of the design, the printing, everything shows up a little bit nicer. I really like these components quite a bit. I like that there's a there's a couple more components like some cars, subway trains. Uh, it just feels more lived in, um, if that's a good way of describing it. So I like that. Uh, we got ourselves it appears to be the rules and uh, terrain color guide. So we got co cooperative mode rules here, which I really like. Uh, just kind of showcasing the uh, the various ways that uh, the enemy AI will function. Uh, that's really nice. That was one of my big complaints about Shadows of the Past. I felt that if you couldn't get uh, people on the table for it, you know, you just, you weren't going to be able to really enjoy the game. 
Uh, but these two resources are actually quite nice, quite excellent. I like that quite a bit. Uh, so very nice addition there. Very cool. And then we, oh my goodness, still more token or stuff here. I really shouldn't be surprised. This this was a heavy box after all. So we have the tiles here. Nothing uh, nothing really big or fancy about the tiles. I do like that uh, it looks like any sort of hazards buildings are very clearly marked on it. So you know where where things are. You know where the uh, the boundaries for everything are. Uh, really nice. The artwork is solid. I like uh, I like the little bits of details on here. I don't think they're anything to like write home about, but uh, they do look really nice and they add a nice little flair to the game itself. So it looks like we got a little bit of base toppers. They are coming with plenty of um, uh, of baggies for everything. We have a round tracker here. We got all our cards. Very nice. I do like incorporating the artwork from the game itself or from the comics. Really like the dice. Each uh, each turtle has their own set of dice here. Uh, it is a little unfortunate that this is not the Kickstarter edition, which had a whole bunch of extra content that came out for it. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, so and then we got the the cards themselves. Uh, yeah. Really nice. Uh, I like the feel of the cards. They look really solid. Although I'm noticing, let's see, Alapex, we got Old Hob, Mousers, Mega Monsters, Baxter Stockman. Yeah, I'm not seeing uh, uh, Shredder or Karai or any of sort of like those uh, those villains that uh, at the very least I'm much more aware of. So I wonder if that's something that came with the, uh, uh, the expansion, uh, which was uh, City Fall, which unfortunately I do not have my hands on. Uh, but so far, I'm really liking the components for everything here. Uh, but of course, the part that I am most excited about is the miniatures. So let us take a quick look at that. Now, it's actually kind of sad. Uh, apparently, as of this recording, IDW has basically closed down their, uh, their division for board games. So they are no longer making games, no longer publishing it. So this is going to be a game that is going to be, if it's something you're interested in, you're going to have to go hunt it down sooner rather than later. It is going to become a lot more difficult to get your hands on. I know I've already talked with my LGS and he was saying that, uh, you know, distributors just don't really have it anymore uh, outside of a couple. Uh, they still have some city fall, but yeah. So taking a look at the models here and let's just see if we can get to zoom in or at least focus. Okay, let's see here. Let's just see if we can get it to focus a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. So these are still rather like soft plastic uh, PVC minis, very similar to what we see with a lot of these types of board games. But the detail is actually quite nice on it. Uh, the proportions look a lot better than they did on the previous one as well. Uh, I like there's a lot more dynamic flow and movement to it. I mean, that much is obvious if we if we grab Mikey here. And uh, you can see here, like they actually have them up on the on the skateboard. It's got the nunchuck, although it's a really thick rope on the nunchuck there. So all in all, I, I really like it. I think uh, I think they've done a really solid job with the miniatures. Even the tray itself is a lot better. It's very clear where all the models go, uh, which is really nice. Which was another one of the complaints. And yeah, those proportions are a lot better. In oh, there we go. In the previous one, Casey was just friggin' massive in comparison to everyone else. So it's really nice to see uh, to see that scale a little bit better. Uh, even the Mousers, let's see if I can get one out here. Even the Mousers, that scale is a lot nicer than before. It just makes a lot more sense. So yeah, the, the original Shadows of the Past just had scaling issues all over the place. These ones, the yeah, I, I'm really liking them. The, the detail on these guys is actually really good. Even for the soft plastic PVC, it, it has a nice feel to it. There's a durable feel to it, which is really kind of cool. So anyway, yeah, that is uh, that is the Ninja Turtles uh, Change is Constant uh, board game. So just taking a quick peek at it right there. Uh, the components are fantastic. The minis are great. Uh, all in all, I'm, I'm excited to get this on the table. Uh, I've heard very good things about it. Uh, they they have done a couple more. We're seeing a, a Batman one coming out as well. Um, it's just a shame that uh, we're not going to be seeing more of this particular game system. I do know uh, Pete Walsh has been moving on to some other projects as well that he's been hinting at. Uh, so hopefully we see some more exciting stuff from him in the future. Uh, but for anyone who grew up in the 80s and 90s, this one is kind of uh, kind of cool because I mean I lived, breathed at Ninja Turtles when I was younger. So, you know, being able to actually put them on a table and play a game around them, digging it. So anyway, that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Change is Constant by IDW Games. 
Uh, if you can get your hands on it, definitely try to do so. The game system is a lot of fun. I have had, um, I mean, obviously it, it evolved from the Shadows of the Past one. Uh, so, you know, it is a solid game system. And they've, uh, from what I understand, they've only refined it with this, which is really nice. Let's go take a look. Leave your comments below. Hit that like and subscribe button as usual. And we will see you next week. Happy Wargaming.